YouTubers, welcome to my shop here in Asheville, North Carolina. This is my second solenoid engine build, and I thought I'd explain a few things about it. Um, I enjoy making solenoid engines, they're a lot of fun. Uh, they don't need fuel, I don't need a fire, <laughs> I don't need much oil. I put a couple drops here and there, but that's about it. Um, I like it because you could turn it on and go. I have a controller so I can control the speed. And um, I just enjoy watching this one roll. So I started with, I wanted to make a two cylinder solenoid engine. I got a couple solenoids on the interweb and they were 12 volt. They have what's called uh, um, an extended stroke, and they are 135 millimeter stroke, which is about a buck and a quarter. And the stroke on my crank I made to be a buck and an eight. So I've got a 9 16th throw on my crank. And the crank pin itself is uh, 5 eighths, I believe, or half inch. I can't remember. I think it's half inch. This flywheel here has magnets in it. And I'll explain that later, but basically the magnets are what's turning on the LEDs. I'm going to go from the bottom up. So my buddy, he's an electrician, he harvested a bunch of copper out of a hospital. And it's a bunch of half inch plate that they use for buses, electrical buses. And so about the time I was making this crank, he gave me all this copper. And I decided to use it for the frame for my engine. My connecting rods, they are aluminum. I wanted to go lightweight so they can spin fast. They're not finished. Uh, they got a really rough surface from where I jigsawed it. And I come up here. I don't really care for the solenoid engines I've seen online where they don't have a cross slide and the plunger is just sliding in the solenoid itself. Now a lot of good solenoids, they have a brass insert inside, so the plunger is riding on brass, but I still don't like that concept. So what I did is I came up with these, these are skateboard bearings in here, and they roll on this copper plate track. So it's kind of a cross slide, although it doesn't slide, it's actually rolling on skateboard bearings. And the way this works, the skateboard bearing is always turning in the same direction. Because the load is always pulling on one side. When the solenoid pulls it in, the load is pulling one way. And then when the solenoid shuts off, the flywheel and the crank pulls it the other way. So the skateboard wheel is always going in one direction. And it makes for a really fast setup. There's no friction. Uh, so the plunger is not sliding against the solenoid. And the top, you can't see it, but inside up here, on top of the solenoid, there's a brass bearing. And the plunger has a stem on it that goes through that brass bearing. And you might be able to see it. Right in here, there's a center hole can't see it. Maybe on this one. There it is. That's the top of the plunger. That's the stem you're seeing coming up through the center hole of this. But there is a brass bearing on top of the coil inside. So the plunger is on bearings at the top and it's on skateboard bearings up underneath. So it's got nice support so it rolls up and down nice and straight with no friction. 
The crank itself is rolling on electric motor roller bearings and they have a strange ID. It's 11 sixteenths is the ID on these. And uh, But uh, I really wanted this crank on roller bearings and I wanted to make this engine as frictionless as possible. And I think I might have achieved that. I love engines with push rods and rockers. I know that there are a thousand more efficient ways to make the switch on the solenoid work. Yada yada. I don't care. I like push rods and rockers. So these solenoids switch on and off via this eccentric. This eccentric is a roller bearing. And it pushes up on the push rod, going all the way up through. Push rod is in a bearing up here. Obviously, this is a brass head, comes up, works the rocker. These are my squirrel rockers. They look like little squirrels. Uh, I put a roller in there. That's a stainless steel roller. And then for pins, coincidentally, a 16-penny nail is a 1 8th diameter. So I was able to do all of this in 8th inch. And then these are magnets that keep the pins in place. And I got these at Lowe's, and they have an eighth inch hole in the center of them. So uh, the magnets are what keeps all the pins in place on this. Now, this is just temporary, uh, but I had to make copper springs for contacts. And copper likes to break. If you um, use it for a spring too much, it'll break off eventually. So the way to overcome that is to make it as long as possible. So I coiled it and made it into a spring. And so the solenoid is connected to these copper tabs through the head. And they are insulated from everything. You can't see it, but I have plexiglass washers in here. So these copper tabs are the other side of the coil. I have hot. This is hot. This is insulated as well. This bolt is connected to wires going underneath into the, the copper tubing. There's the coil, you can barely see if the camera would focus. Anyways, the other side of the coil comes out to this copper tab. The rocker grounds it out and makes the connection to make it come on. I like the push rod and rockers because it really makes it sound like a, an engine. So the LEDs, <laughs> I learned a lot about LEDs and I learned that you cannot just connect LEDs to any old power source, it doesn't work that way. I was trying to hook these LEDs up to my 12 volt power source and although the lights would work fine when I would plug it into the charger and I had to put a resistor on the lights because they, you can't just plug these in the straight power. Uh, it would run fine on the charger but when I would put the lights in the engine I wanted the lights to be inside the cylinder and I wanted them to light up the space right here. I cut that open so that the light would shine through. Well, every time I'd hook it up to the engine, I kept popping lights, popping lights. And I'd put more resistance on it, but then the lights wouldn't light up. So if I didn't put enough resistance on it, the lights would just pop. Well, in my research, I discovered these coils, when they turn on and off, they make a high voltage spike. 
don't know if you can see it on camera, but in here, there it is, there's a flash. That's your high voltage spike. And that's what's popping my lights. So what I did, I went to an external source here. I found a, a relay coil, a coil from a relay. I mounted on here, I put magnets in my flywheel. And now I'm turning, making a little bit of juice in this coil and it makes the LEDs flash. I just bumped my wire. So this engine came out pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with it. I would have liked to make it prettier, um, but man, no matter how hard I try to make something pretty like this, I end up scratching it or dinging it or, uh, it's so frustrating. I did take great care to make it balanced. Um, the flywheels I machined on the crank on my lathe, uh, so they are true with the crank. Um, I also, I used my steady rest, I machined it with the bearings on. So I put the bearing in the steady rest and used that uh, to turn the crank uh, when I machined it. So it's true. And these, um, they came out really straight. I'm happy with that. That is a straight flywheel. I don't like seeing janky flywheels. Kind of bugs me. These ones turn true. This is a little spacer I have on here. It's holding the flywheel on. Um, there's a shoulder on the crank and these uh, cap screws are putting pressure against the flywheel and that's what's holding it on. I have plans to put a, a, a gear or a belt pulley or something here to drive stuff. And so this is just temporary. It's just a chunk of pipe that I made flat and it's holding the flywheel on. But it will be something pretty. I'm thinking of doing a bicycle chain drive and have it turn, I don't know. Uh, I want to make a Van de Graaff generator and I want this to turn the generator. But it is really balanced. Uh, coincidentally, these solenoids, a solenoid is basically a two stroke. And so I was able to make these opposite of each other. And that helps a lot to balance it. And this thing fires opposite. So this rocker is firing this cylinder. This rocker is firing this cylinder. And I did that so that I could put the eccentric opposite of the, uh, the crank throw for even a little more balance. I didn't want to put it, if I would have done it the other way, the eccentric would be moving with the crank throw and it would make the balance even worse. So I chose to put the eccentric opposite of this crank throw so when this throw is going up, that eccentric is coming down. And that's why we have the opposite. It also helped me to make my tabs bigger and come around. It was harder to get this tab to fire on this. So it's easier to make a longer tab and have the other one fire it. Well, I don't claim to be a machinist, but I'm kind of proud of this engine. Pretty happy about it. I'm going to get some acorn nuts and beauty it up a little bit. Like right here, I'll make these uh, quarter inch studs with an acorn nut on it. And I'll do a couple of other things to it, but um, I'm just having fun playing with it. I like the way it sounds.